It finally looks like Greg Marshall's time at Wichita State is done, and potentially one of my favorite programs in college basketball is going to go down the drain. Greg should absolutely be fired and everything he did was completely wrong, but it will be sad to see the Shockers basketball program take a complete nosedive. Just a few short years ago, they were in the Final Four and had almost beat Louisville to advance to the national title game. Greg Marshall took the Shockers to some of their best years in history and helped them jump conferences. The Shockers have always been competitive and they've had a lot of memorable guys in recent years such as Fred Van Vliet, Ron Baker, Clay Anthony Early, Landry Shamit, and Marcus McDuffie. So how did such a little school get that good and start producing NBA players? Well, today we'll talk about the rise and fall of Wichita State basketball and what I think is next for the program. We also dive into what Greg Marshall did, just how bad the allegations were. But first, college basketball typically does not do very well on YouTube, so please be sure to give the video a like, drop a comment, give me a suggestion, share it with your friends, and stay until the end. That will greatly help the video, and I really appreciate it. And now let's get started with the downfall of Wichita State basketball. To begin, Wichita State was known as Fairmount College, and they first took the court in 1906 under head coach Willis Bates. During that time, the teams there were known as the Wheat Shockers, and the first official game they played was held in the basement of one of their buildings, and they lost 37-10. Flash forward about 30 years, Shocker basketball finally achieved some success when coach Ralph Miller arrived. Cleo Littleton became the first star player for them in the 50s, and due to all the team's success, they joined the Missouri Valley Conference and built a new arena. Littleton averaged 19 points a game during his career and still owned seven school records. Dave Stallworth entered the program in 1961 and became, the f and became a first team All-American. Ralph Miller is the eighth winningest coach of all time and is, in the and is in the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame. Gary Thompson was the next coach and in one of his first years he defeated SMU and Oklahoma State to head to their first Final Four in program history. While there, the Shockers were matched up against the defending national champions UCLA and they lost 108-89. Gene Smithson was the next coach in 1981, and in that year, the Shockers would return all the way to the NCAA Tournament where they'd defeat the Kansas Jayhawks in a battle of New Orleans before being defeated by LSU in the Elite Eight. That 1981 team featured two NBA players, Cliff Levingston and Antoine Carr, and both would be chosen in the first 10 picks of the NBA Draft. Another future NBA player, Xavier McDaniel, would arrive the year after the Elite Eight season, and he scored 2,152 points at Wichita State, which is second best in school history. He also has the record for rebounds. He became the first player in NCAA Division I history to lead the nation in scoring and rebounding in the same season. In nine years, Smithson won 155 games, placing him second in school history behind Ralph Miller. Smithson was the first coach to guide Wichita State to consecutive 21 seasons, and after that, a familiar face came in as coach. Mark Turgeon would come in, and he would struggle for a few years to be honest, but in the 2005-2006 season, he'd lead Wichita State to its best season in 20 years, reaching the Sweet 16 with victories over the 10 seed Seton Hall and number 2 seed Tennessee. In the Sweet 16, the Shockers would go on to lose to the eventual Final Four participant George Mason. In 2007, the Shockers entered the season with high expectations and surged out to a 9-0 record, and they were once ranked as high as number 8 in the country, but they would completely fall apart and finish with a 17-14 record. After the season, somehow Mark was considered good enough for a high-profile job and would go to Texas A&M, and the Shockers went out and hired up-and-coming Winthrop coach Greg Marshall. Marshall did pretty well in its first few years and finally kind of broke out in 2011, and the team went 29-8, finishing second in the Missouri Valley Conference. They'd go on to win the NIT championship that year as a four-seed, and they defeated one-seeds Virginia Tech and Alabama to win the championship game. In the 2012 season, they continued to improve under Marshall and won the regular season Missouri Valley Conference title and went 26-4 overall. Shockers reached a ranking of number 14 in the country, but after losing to Illinois State in the semifinals of the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament, the Shockers were selected for an at-large tournament bid as a 5 seed, and this was their first tournament in 6 years. They would eventually follow VCU 62-59, ending the season with a 27-6 record, but they would shock the world the next year. Despite losing a ton of starters, the Shockers went on to win their first 9 games, as well as 19 of their first 21. Guys like Tequila Cotton, Clay Anthony Early, Ron Baker, Fred Van Vliet all rose up to join star Malcolm Armstead. They would get a 9 seed in the NCAA tournament, and the Shockers upset a top seed at Gonzaga to move to the Sweet 16 for the first time since 2006. They followed that with a win against LaSalle to get to their first Elite Eight since 1981. They then defeated Ohio State while they were there, and this was their first Final Four since 1965. They also set the record for wins in a season with 30. In the Final Four, they almost beat number one overall seed Louisville but they would end up losing by 4 points, and this was absolutely heartbreaking, but they would have an amazing team returning the next year. 
the 2014 season proved to be historic and possibly the greatest season in Shocker basketball history. They cracked number two at one point, and it was the highest the Shockers had been ranked in school history. After they beat Bradley, they became just the 11th Division I team to start a season 30-0. They received the number one ranking in the Midwest region of the 2014 tournament, and they blew out their first opponent, Cal Poly, to become the first team in the history of college basketball to advance to a record of 35-0, a mark that would eventually be matched by Kentucky just two years later. The Shockers ended the season with an instant classic of a game with Kentucky, Unfortunately, Fred Van Vliet would miss a three-pointer at the buzzer, and the Shockers would lose to Kentucky, who would eventually go on to the national title, and their final record ended up being 35-1, and their one loss came at the absolute worst time. They lost Clay Anthony early, but gained former four-star Kansas transfer Connor Frankamp. They climbed all the way up to number eight in the country and got a seven-seed in the 2015 NCAA tournament, where they beat the 10-seed Indiana and the two-seed Kansas before losing to Notre Dame. Going into the 2015-16 season, it was going to be the last year of Van Vliet and Baker, but they brought in Marcus McDuffie and Landry Shaman as recruits, and they would become the future of the team. Despite starting out preseason top 10, the Shockers struggled and barely made the tournament as an 11 seed. They beat Vanderbilt in the first four, and they defeat the number 6 seed Arizona before they lost to Miami in the round of two by way of a big comeback. Sadly, the Baker and Van Vliet era was over, and they would need to go in a new direction. Led by Landry Shamit, Marcus McDuffie, and Connor Frankamp, the Shockers had another good season won the Missouri Valley Conference, and got a 10 seed in the 2016 tournament. They upset Archie Miller State and Flyers in the first round, before they lost a really close game to Kentucky in the second round. After the season, it was announced that Wichita State would be moving to the American Conference for basketball, and it would start that year. They were ranked number 7 to start the year, and would climb as high as number 5, but they would lose 4 games in the American Athletic Conference, and would end up with a 4 seed in the NCAA tournament. Sadly, things did not go their way as they lost to Marshall in the first round, and this is one of the biggest upsets of the year. Shamit would leave for the NBA, and 10 other guys would have to be replaced from the roster. Marcus McDuffie carried the team in 2018-19, and they struggled to an 8-11 record at first. They would right in the ship though and win 11 of their last 13 games before losing to Cincinnati in the American Athletic Championship game, and if they would have won that, they would have gotten a bid, but this was the first time in a couple years that they had not made the tournament. Instead, they went to the NIT, where they won 3 of their 4 games. It looked like that was just a rebuilding year for them, but the 2020 squad would rebound. They had six guys average net. They had six guys average nearly 10 points per game, and at one point they were 15 and one and ranked number third and ranked number 23 in the country. They would lose five of their last 11 games and fall to a bubble team, but they would have a chance in the American Athletic Conference tournament to fix it. But wrong, it was canceled due to COVID-19, and so was the NCAA tournament. I don't know if they would have gotten in, but I think Wichita State would have gotten a nod. This is when things start to get really bad though. The Shockers have had 22 guys transfer since the 2015 season, and six of them left this offseason, and some really disturbing stuff surfaced from Greg Marshall. Here are some really bad examples of things he apparently did. Star player Shaq Morris apparently had informed Greg Marshall that his mother had cancer just a few hours prior to Marshall punching him in the head in practice. The stadium report also said that Marshall choked an assistant coach by the name of Kyle Linstead during the 2016-17 season, told Isaiah Poor Bear Chandler, who was of Native American descent, to get back on his horse and make Indian howling noises, told James Ekinichi, who is from Columbia, that he'd be a great coffee bean picker when he struggled on the court, and one of the most weird ones is that a student athlete apparently parked in his spot, and Greg Marshall got so mad that he ran up to him and tried to punch him through the window. Apparently the players despised Marshall and wanted to beat him up, but he was a coach and that was inappropriate behavior. After all this surfaced, Wichita State decided to part ways with him, and now they are in need of a new coach. I really don't even know what to make of this Greg Marshall stuff, because I really thought the guy was a good coach, and I really respected him for quite a while, but all that respect went out the window, and I honestly hope this stuff isn't true, because some of that is just terrible. Right now, I don't know who's going to be the next coach, but I've seen a lot of reports that Thad Modic could potentially be linked to the job, but I'm very curious to see who takes over. It's a pretty good brand in an up-and-coming conference, with a really good fan base and nice facilities, but the coach will basically have to start from scratch and rebuild the school's reputation, which will not be easy to do. Really sad to see how all this has happened, and this is how it comes to an end for Marshall and the Wichita State program. That behavior is inexcusable and just stupid. When you represent a coach of a team, you have to be smarter than that, and even if you have those stupid urges, you just gotta contain them. This honestly reminds me a little bit of the Bob Knight situation, but this is almost worse. But let me know, what do you guys think of the program? Did you guys like Wichita State basketball over the year? And just give me your thoughts on the video. I'd also like to know who you think will be the next head coach of the team. 
before you go, college basketball videos don't do well, as I said, so be sure to give the video a like, subscribe if you're new, share this with your friends, comment what you think, suggest a future video, and turn on post notifications, and that'll help the video do a lot better, and I can make more college basketball content. While you're still here, check out all my other basketball videos, and until next time, peace.